on this Resurrection Sunday morning, let us remember to have hope in a risen Savior. For hope is not merely wishful thinking, but a confident expectation in the promises of our faithful God through Jesus Christ. And this is In The Moment. I'm your host, Reverend Ricky Allen Jr. Thanking you as always for this lovely day the Lord has made. And we know it's not just any day, it's Resurrection Sunday. So say it loud, say it proud, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, He is risen, He is risen indeed. Amen. Because we serve a living, risen Savior. So let's get started. Our morning scripture comes from Psalm 33, 20 through 22. Psalm 33, 20 through 22 reads as follows. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him, our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May, our, may your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. And we definitely do that every day we wake up, every day we're walking on this earth. We live in the hope of a risen Savior. For we know, it's, it's at this time we know that he rose with all power in his hand. And if you trust in him today, if, if you experience Jesus today in relationship, I hope, there's that word again, that you will feel the same way as I do, as we all do. Now, you might be out there and you need prayer. So we definitely want to pray for you on this lovely Resurrection Sunday morning. I hope the sun is out. I hope the birds are chirping. And I just hope that you are in the right mind right now. There's so much stuff going on. Let's go to prayer. Gracious and loving God, as we gather on this Resurrection Sunday morning, our hearts are filled with gratitude and joy as we celebrate the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. We come before you with reverence and awe, acknowledging the profound significance of this day in our faith journey. Lord, on this blessed morning, we are reminded of the incredible sacrifice Jesus made for us on the cross and the victory over sin and death that he secured through his resurrection. As we reflect on the empty tomb, may we be filled with hope and assurance that death has been defeated and new life is ours through Christ. We thank you, Jesus, for the hope that this morning brings, a hope that transcends all circumstances, a hope that anchors our souls amidst life storms. Just as the dawn breaks after the darkness of night, so does the light of your love shine brightly in our lives, dispelling the fear and the despair. So on this Resurrection Sunday morning, we lift up our praises to you, O God, for your faithfulness and your love. We thank you for the promise of new beginnings and the assurance of your presence with us always. May the resurrection power of Jesus Christ continue to transform our lives and inspire us to live boldly for your kingdom. Help us carry the message of your son, the message of hope, redemption, and eternal life to all those we encounter today and forevermore. May our own lives be a testament to the transforming power of of your grace and may we never cease to proclaim the good news of jesus christ our risen savior we pray all these things in the name of the father in the name of the son in the name of the holy spirit amen on this resurrection sunday turn with me to luke 24 we're going to start at verse 1 and go to verse 12, Luke 24, verse 1 through 12. And our topic today is living a resurrected life. Living a resurrected life. What does that look like? Well, we're going to dive into that. Luke 24, 1 through 12 reads as follows. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed their, down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? 
He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to, to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away wondering to himself what had happened. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for everything that we have, though we know we don't deserve it. We thank you for your grace that you give freely. And in a world looking for answers to their questions from other sources, I thank God that I had a loving family to present me the truth. And I pray that on this morning as folks are gathering and coming into town, preparing for dinner and pictures and people they haven't seen in a while, I pray, Father, that they are presented the truth and are not going to debate the day or the name or any of that other stuff that doesn't make nothing do anything. We pray, Father, always for you to bless the reading of your blessed word and may we give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. These and all things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want you to reflect on this scene this morning as we think on this topic of living a resurrected life. I want you to think of where you are with Jesus Christ. Are you ashamed of how long it took for you to come to Christ? Maybe you feel guilty at all the things you've done in your life and now that you're saved, the guilt of what you considered wasted time is weighing on you. Maybe it is life decisions going wrong that you've repented for, but you're still dealing with the aftershocks here on earth. I have some encouraging words as we dive into this Resurrection Sunday, and I hope you find some peace in them before we get started. First of all, God uses everything. God uses everything. In your sin, Christ, for you, Christ died for you. We're told this in Romans 5, 8, but when God, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God uses everything. God can use the dark portions of your life with your foundated portions of your life in Christ and give you a testimony that can save this world and save your friends and your neighborhoods around you. Don't think that he can't use whatever portion of your life that you consider dark and unusable. Loosen up. I need you to loosen up. Satan is constantly on the heels of believers to have them living in their past, locking it to their ankle like a ball and chain. Sure, you get a little distance from it, but you're never free of it. Christ died for you to be free. So be free, but loosen up. Don't take you, yourself so seriously. Don't beat yourself up for the things you've done. Even though you've come to Christ and you've repented and you're living this new life, because if you're, if you're still doing that, if you're still beating yourself up for mistakes of the past and you're not really this, you're not really living a new life. And that's what we're talking about today. Finally, pray over and protect joy at all costs. John 10, 10, Jesus says this, the thief comes to only steal and kill and destroy. I've come that they may have life and have it to the full. If you want to live a full life, protect your joy. Don't compromise it. Don't compromise your happiness. Don't, don't sacrifice it, protect it. 
God wants you to be joyful. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to live this life to the fullest. So be encouraged in that. Don't think that you have to do what the world says you have to do to be happy. That, that's, not, that's not where Jesus is. Okay? So remember God uses everything. Loosen up and pray over and protect your joy at all costs. Now, that's just a snippet of the things you can think about when you ask yourself, am I living a resurrected life? Don't make this more complicated than what it is. Don't overthink it. Think about everything Jesus Christ has done for you and how you've responded to it. Today, reflect on it and ponder that question. We sing the songs, you read your Bible, you come to Bible study, you give out food, and you help where you can in other areas of your church, I'm sure. But do you really feel like you're living like Christ rose from the grave? Do you live with the attitude that Christ can do anything? Do you pray like he can do anything? Do you respond to the world's woes as if you serve a Lord that can do anything according to his will? The limitations of your life are based on what Christ has for you. And when you get there, you see it all like climbing Mount Everest and looking out at where you came from down, down below you. So when we get to this self-evaluation, you may call it on the morning Christ is risen. There are a few observations you can make in regards to living a resurrected life on what we read here in the scriptures here in Luke. First, living a resurrected life means embracing the unexpected results from God. Embracing the unexpected results from God. Luke 24, 1 through 3, we see the women came to the tomb expecting to find Jesus' body and anoint it with spices. Instead, they found an empty tomb. The expected result of crucifixion was death. The unexpected results from God was a risen Savior. What can be thought of people who were told time and time again this was going to happen and were given what's to come? Living a resurrected life means trusting in the Alpha and Omega of the words of Jesus and responding like this is going to happen, like this will happen, because he said it would happen. And what was going to happen next, he said that too. And he, we know he told them this. Matthew 17, 22 to 23 says, And while they were gathered together in Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And he will be raised on the third day, and they were deeply grieved. Yet, through all of that, they still had forgotten. They came still looking to prepare a body. There is no dialogue on someone, even the disciples saying, hey, put that away. He said he's going to come back, so you don't need those things. No one says this. No, and this is where Jesus reminds us through his actions. Because even if we forget what he says, he's still on the job. He is still on task, which segues to our next point, and that is living a resurrected life is to remember his words. We see that in four, verses 4 through 8. In their confusion and fear, the ladies are reminded by the two men, angels, of the words of Christ, predicting his death and resurrection. This teaches us that living a resurrected life involves constantly recalling and holding on to the promises of God, even when our emotions make us feel otherwise. Let's not dumb that down. Let's slow down for a moment. Let's understand that, yes, there was a lot going on at that time. You're, you're watching a person who you love, who you have been doing life with, ministry with, dying on a cross. And everybody's there on the side of either mocking him or they're on the side of weeping for him. So yes, you're going to have these emotions. You're going to experience and feel something for everything you've gone through. Yet, we must remember this is where we align 
this with our own lives. To remember God's word is to live it. And when you live it, you'll remember it. And when you remember it, you'll always know what's coming next, even when you can't see it. And at that point, you're living in the current state of God's word in this day and time. Don't ever think God won't bring people into your life to bring you back to remembrance of his word as well. In this case, it was the angels. And their presence had value. Why? Look at verse 8. They remembered his words. But, they, but it took someone to snap them out of it. To, to get them back out of what the world's rules are on life and death and remember what Christ said on these things. And that leads us to uh, number three. Living a resurrected life means witnessing to the truth. We see that in verse 9 through 11. The women, after their encounter, went back and reported all these things to the 11 to all the others. This shows that living a resurrected life involves witnessing to the truth of Jesus' resurrection, even when others may not believe our testimony. And there are a lot of people out there that are not going to go for this. They're not going to believe it. But we still must bear witness to it. This is our faith we're talking about here. This is what we believe. And if you don't believe it and you're sitting in church somewhere and you call yourself a Christian, you are deceiving yourselves. Look at verse 11. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Now, did they really think this? Now, I had to, look, I went and looked this up in the Greek. It says they considered it leros, meaning silly talk. So yeah, they did think this. Strong's Concordance puts the context to be uh, the meaning of the word being an incredible story, an idle tale. They didn't take it in for what it was. Why? Because they had forgotten too. Because they were in their emotions. They had went from being on the spiritual journey Falling back to earth <laughs> and living under the world's condition again, the, the world's rules again. Yet Jesus was trying to show them something up here in the heavens and trying to show him, show them the authority that he had over life and death. In the moment they don't see him, the moment he's gone, they fall right back into the mentality of daily living. Where is the faith? Where is your faith? When Christ says he's going to do something, where do you stand? This is what it comes down to. Especially when it doesn't happen immediately. Jesus raised people from the dead. He turned water into wine. He walked on the water. He made the blind see and the lame walk, cast out demons. How much more does it take for them and for you, for me, to remember these things when we come to points where we see the rough side of the mountain of life and forget there is a great valley on the other side of that same slope. How much does it take for you to take this in and remember the power of Jesus Christ over life and death for you to live a resurrected life? Because he's not dead, he's alive, and we're dead in our sin because he carried it to the death with him and rose again. So we rise with him knowing our victory over sin is because of his birth, death, crucifixion, and resurrection. Stop looking for signs to believe. You have enough. Stop debating if there was a God. Have some confidence in your prayers to Jesus Christ and bear witness to this truth right here. It's more than enough. Stop going through these things with people. You stand on the promises of God. You stand on them. Don't sit there and think you're going to sell this to anybody. Don't think you're going to convince them. Either they're going to believe you or they're not. This is where we are nowadays. We got churches out here trying to sell the gospel. We got churches trying to have full-blown rock concerts to make folks feel comfortable. We got people out here that are not even saying blood of Jesus and crucifixion and resurrection because they don't want people to run away. Guess what? They were never with you in the first place. 
And if you if you cannot speak the truth for what it is plainly and in confidence, then you're falling into Satan's snare of not being able to profess Christ as Lord because you're so worried about people's feelings. Look, I'm going to tell you right now, in my church, I tell them consistently, no one is safe. Not even me. Not my wife, not my kids, not my members. No one is safe. Any day could be your turn to get convicted. Any day could be your turn to get your toes stomped on. Any day it's anybody's turn to feel something that makes them feel uncomfortable because they know they're doing something wrong. They know they're doing something in poor spirit and they don't want to hear about it because they came to the church for the wrong reasons in the first place. You better learn how the church, you better learn how the church because that's why we come. Not because we got it right, because we're, we're getting it wrong. We're doing things wrong. We're making mistakes daily. We still sin. We have victory over sin through Christ Jesus to where we can say that no with strength and say, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to do better with my life. I'm going to do better at my habits. But we do that through the strength of Christ and not our own. And finally, Living a resurrected life invites us to run to the truth of Christ. And we run in trust or doubt. Here, I don't want to scare you here. I don't want you to be bothered here. All right? We run in trust or we run in doubt. That's real. Verse 12. While the apostles initially did not believe the women, Peter ran to the tomb to see for himself and left wondering what had happened. I would encourage you to remember something about this text. And it does not say it but the look at but look at the behavior peter is running to the tomb to see the truth for himself now here is where we need to ask the important question and discover the shocking truths about ourselves when jesus has told you he's going to do something in your life or the life of the others and this thing whatever it is happens how are you running are you running in the excitement that you're going to see it? It's awesome. Praise Jesus. Or are you running still in the doubt you're going to see something different, but you're going to go because you want to see what happened just out of being nosy? Are you running in truth? Or are you running still in doubt? All the way there. Are you running still in doubt? Living a resurrected life, you run in the certainty of God's word and not in doubt. Here's a man who has walked with Christ and has seen so much, but when he got there, he was still wondering what happened. Oftentimes, we're all running just like Peter. We're running to see what happened, and we forget the entire time we're running to see what Jesus has done, that we forget what Jesus said he'd do. We're human, some would say. But to live a resurrected life, we investigate in trust and in truth. Why are you wondering if he's going to do it? No, we know he's going to do it. We know what he did for us and what he's still doing for us. It's never a matter of if, it's only a matter of when. That's living with Jesus Christ right now. That's living in the current state of Christ risen. That's living in the covering of the blood of Christ shed for the sins of humanity. That's living with the understanding for those who come in relationship with Jesus, accept him as Lord and Savior over our lives when we get baptized and we keep trusting his word. And it's only knowing that he loves you, sees you, and will take care of you. John 10, 7, John 10 17 through 18, Jesus says this. The reason my father loves me is that I laid down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I laid down my, of my own accord. I have the authority to lay it down and the authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. So when you cite John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have ever lasting life this is truth live like it's true leave your time here today at the cross knowing what bill gaither knew when he penned these words to a famous hymn that we all know 
at least you've heard it at least once in your life if you're a believer and if you've come to Christ I know you've heard it somewhere because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth living worth the living just because he lives live the resurrected life today stop living like you're still dead to sin get up dust yourself off remember that you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior over your life walk like it talk like it live like it and if you're out there and you have not done this I have you know there's still time as long as you're breathing and if you need someone to pray for you go to get-prayer.com and drop us a line and we'll pray for you let us know what you need to get you there because you got to get there to truly understand the significance of the stone being rolled away early on Resurrection Sunday. Until next time, may God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And God willing, we'll talk to you next week. You take care.